Okay, there you go. <laughs> All right. Um, hi, everybody. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Ashley. I live up in Ossining. Up, up, Ossining is up from right, right? Yes. Well, my New York geography is over, not great. over and up. Over and up. <laughs> um, I've been writing about food and recipes on big flavors from a tiny kitchen since 2006. Um, and I have been doing these Appy Hour programs with Catherine and the Rye Library for several months now, and they're always a lot of fun. Um, and someone on her team came up with the name, and I love it because I love a good pun. <laughs> But um, today we're making two different appetizer recipes. They don't involve any heat or like actual cooking. So they're great for warm weather, lazy days, and they're awesome to be made ahead. Um, so we're gonna make a buffalo chickpea dip and smoked salmon roll-ups. Um, both of them taste great for like a couple days later, as long as you keep them in the fridge. I think that the dip tastes better after it, tastes better after it chills. So I think we'll make that first. Um, and if you are cooking along, um, make sure your cream cheese is out of the refrigerator for the um, roll-ups. And I'm just gonna pin, I'm gonna spotlight my camera and my overhead. So See, what about questions? Should people, oh, yeah. people just unmute or do you want to- You can to unmute, yeah. you can um, type it in the chat if you want, um, very laid back. I welcome questions suggestions if you just want to tell me what you're eating tonight totally cool um and yeah um and these are also the roll-ups are really great in lunch boxes and i have another roll-up recipe that's kind of similar but has like a veggie cream cheese like what you would get at um at a deli and uh, my son loves that with like different veggies kind of rainbow colored laid on it and then rolled up or like deli meat so they're really versatile you can just kind of like mix them at your favorites so Let's do the dip first. We're going to, if you have a food processor or you could use a blender if you need, um, if you don't have a food processor. Um, we're going to rinse and drain uh, 15 and a half. They're usually 15 and a half. Sometimes they're like slightly under over can of chickpeas. Um, and this is actually a recipe I made years ago for Stonyfield. Um, using one of their yogurts that I don't even know if it's still around. It was a double cream yogurt. So it was like kind of like Greek yogurt, but not as tangy. So like in between Greek and regular. Um, and if, as a side note, you can save the liquid from cans of chickpeas. It's called aquafaba and you can beat it just like egg whites and it gets stiff. A lot of people use it in vegan baking recipes. Um, I'm dumping it today because I need to plan better and decide what I'm going to use it for sometime. Um, but it is kind of a cool ingredient to experiment with. So, um, so I've just been using Greek yogurt in this recipe and it works out nicely. If you have um, regular yogurt that's not the thick Greek style, you might just want to add a little bit less in case it makes it too runny. You can always add more, but you can't take any more out. Um, and this recipe would be great game day if you're a sports person. Um, it's good in lunch boxes if you're if your kids are into spicy or if you're a grown up who takes their lunch somewhere. It's a really nice one, um, and it's very easy to scale it. You can get like a big can of chickpeas, and you can make more than um, just this little amount at a time. So we're just going to blend um, the chickpeas. And then I use uh, Frank's Red Hot Wing Sauce, which is a little different than the regular Frank's Red Hot Hot Sauce. The hot sauce, the wing sauce is basically their hot sauce and butter already blended together. So it's a little bit different than, it's like more of a creamy color than their hot sauce. Um, I put three tablespoons in the mix. If you wanna, if you're worried it's gonna be a little too spicy, start with two, you can always add more later. And I always drizzle some on at the end because it looks it looks pretty. Can I ask a quick question? Please do. So if you I have so much of the regular Franks. Uh huh. Do I can I so if I were to use that, would I just mm -hmm. maybe mix in a little butter or what? You what know, you I haven't tried it, but I would think that you can use maybe do like melt some butter. Mm -hmm. So because if you put like cold butter in here, I don't think it'll. Right. Um, mix in too well but yeah maybe try it um you can try it first without any butter it's only a few ingredients so maybe put in like 
start with two tablespoons mm -hmm. and after you blend everything together taste it and then if you think it's like feels like it's missing a little something do the um a little butter or maybe a little more so uh, hot sauce i think it might be okay no, I just have to try it. no thank you very much i just yeah. we bought it at costco so i have these two big bottles of it, you know so <laughs> yeah i know and it's like if it's for one recipe you don't want to buy a whole new thing for just one recipe i totally get it um yeah try it and and do let me know uh how it is because if it still tastes like wings then that's a good note for me i'll um, update the post on my website so people know like yeah. hey you can do it with this i'm gonna make it this weekend awesome all right so we've got the rinsed and drained chickpeas three tablespoons of wing sauce we're gonna use a quarter cup of plain yogurt make sure you don't get vanilla i've made that mistake before the packages look very similar um this is i'm a i'm a bit of a nerd and i've made yogurt in my instant pot yesterday and then I drain I strained some today so that I have like a Greek style yogurt um so it's just like thicker so I have like the runny yogurt and then I have this also if you ever want to make your own yogurt I haven't made a written a post up for it yet but it's very easy it just takes time sitting there um incubating so it's not it's not at all hard to make and if you eat a lot of yogurt it's worth it and it's kind of nice because you can um you can use whatever quality of milk you want. Like if you like milk from the farmer's market, you can use that. If you like getting whatever milk is on sale, you can make like a gallon of yogurt for the price of a gallon of milk, which is quite a bit. Um, and then I just use, if this is of interest to anybody, I use one of these to strain it. It's like a, for making nut milk, which I've never made nut milk, but it's just like this mesh thing. And so you, um, you can use cheesecloth too. You put the yogurt in there, set it over a bowl and it drips out a bunch of liquid and that's how it gets nice and thick. So just a random thing that I've been doing. Um, all right, so we've got a quarter cup of yogurt, a tablespoon of lemon juice. I'm not gonna be super strict measuring it, but feel free to. Um, a lot of times it's nice to measure things precisely the first time you make them and then you can kind of budget the next time if you see if you like what the recommended measurements were all right and then that's all that goes in the food processor so i'm just going to blend it till it's smooth and i'll stop it part of the way through and just scrape down the sides in case there's any um big pieces You could probably, if you don't have a food processor or a blender, you could probably mash this with a fork. It might take a little bit, but. Um, so I'm just kind of scraping some of those big pieces and I'll let it go a little longer. And the wing sauce has a good amount of salt. I don't find that this needs any salt. So um, you can always, though, if you taste it and it feels like it needs a little something, you could add a little salt to it. Go as smooth as you like. Um, I got mine to be like a little bit of a, has a little texture to it. It's not just totally plain. And I'm just gonna taste to see if it's spicy enough. If it's too thick, you can add a little more um, yogurt or if, you, if it needs a little tang, some lemon juice. This is nice and spicy. Um, I'm not sure who was talking before that was, um, using regular hot sauce, but did you taste it yet? I'd like to, I'm curious how it's tasting. I'm actually just watching you. Oh, um, okay, you're gonna make I'm later. All right. Cooking dinner as I'm watching oh, you. Oh, this is the same person, gotcha. So I will, but I'm gonna make it this weekend. Definitely let me know. You can either um, email Catherine or let me know. I'm just curious, because mm -hmm. I don't have Frank's hot sauce, so I don't wanna go buy that to test this, but I am curious. Um, this is also really nice in like sandwiches, like in a wrap or something spread on, just kind of different from your normal like mayo type of condiment. Not that there's anything wrong with mayo. We like mayo a whole lot in this house. 
um, my husband really likes the the extra heavy mayo that they have at delis. That's like his his thing. But they don't sell it in a jar that's smaller than like a deli size thing. So we don't we don't keep that at home. So I'm just gonna um, put this into here. We'll dress it up later. I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator so that it chills and the flavors kind of meld together a little bit. But I'll just kind of like do a couple little divots in it with my spatula so that when I drizzle the sauce on at the end, it just looks kind of pretty. But that's all there is to this recipe. I'm gonna pop it in the fridge. This is one that I really like making if I'm having people over and I need some quick appetizers because it doesn't take a ton of time to put together. Like you can do it even if you've had a busy day, it's not too terribly daunting. Um, and I was telling somebody before we started that my, aside from celery, my favorite thing to dip in that, in that dip is those little veggie chips. They're like kind of puffy circles. Sometimes they're crinkly. Um, the texture works really nicely with it, but it's great with um, fresh veggies, tortilla chips, those like thin pretzels are really nice with it. Um, you could, I feel like I want to experiment with it a little bit and try maybe like some sort of like flatbread appetizer and spread that on there and do some fun toppings. So we'll see how that works out. Um, and then our second appetizer, smoked salmon roll ups. So this could totally work with, um, if you're dairy free, you could use a vegan cream cheese. Um, I think the, in my experience, the, I think Tofuti makes a vegan cream cheese that's not coconutty tasting. Um, Cause I like coconut, but not in, my, not in something like this. I don't think it would work too well. So I've just had this sitting out since a little bit before class and I'm putting it in here. If you buy the uh, whipped cream cheese, it'll mix faster, but I think there's usually a little bit less actual product in those because all the air is whipped in. So you might wanna get a little extra just in case so you don't run out. All right, so we got cream cheese in a small bowl. We're gonna um, finally chop up some fresh dill and green onions. So for the dill, you'll want about a quarter cup. Um, and for this, I would cut off any like huge stems. Um, so like normally herb stems, I don't mind using in recipes, but this is pretty big. You'd have to chop it up pretty finely to get it to really work in there. But I will show you if you, um, if you ever can't find fresh dill, dried dill is great, but I'm just looking at my refrigerator door. Here it is. This is freeze dried dill. They sell it right in the produce department and it's so nice and like bright green. And it's almost as good as fresh dill in recipes. When I substitute this, I'll use maybe like three quarters the amount that I would have fresh. If I was using dried, um, you can see it's just like a little darker, a um, little more powdery. I would use half the amount. Um, I think it would be fine. Either would be fine in this recipe, but when it has so few ingredients, I think fresh is probably better, but you can't always find dill and it does go bad kind of fast. So if you are looking for an herb and it doesn't look good, there are um, alternatives or you could use other fresh herbs. I just think the dill works really nicely uh, with this. I'm just getting rid of these big stems. And I have a couple other recipes that are really good for fresh dill. One um, that I actually re-photographed recently, I'm gonna be updating the post with some more tips and stuff, but it's like a, oh, we made it, we made it um, for a picnic program this summer with the Rye Library. It's a, a chicken salad with dill and um, cornichon pickles. And um, that's a really good way to use fresh dill. And there's another recipe I have that's like um, chicken cutlets. And it's got a really quick marinade that's got fresh dill and grainy mustard and some vinegar. And you just like toss it together while you put some, mix some tomatoes. And then it's really good and it's very fast. So I like to try, if I'm gonna use something like a fresh herb, I'll try to pick two recipes that use the same 
the same thing so that I'm not buying a whole bunch of stuff and wasting it. It does happen, but I try, I try to avoid it when possible. Um, so we're gonna add about a quarter cup in here. The rest off to the side. And then um, I wrote two green onions. <laughs> I went to Wegmans and the green onions were pretty massive. This is like almost a week. So I'm gonna just do one. The amounts aren't at all exact on this recipe and you can add any sort of other stuff that you like to. Um, parsley would be nice. I would avoid maybe something like rosemary just cause it's such a strong, um, flavor and it's kind of woody, it might not work too well in here. Um, I like, I'm just cutting this really kind of thinly to mix in. And I, uh, the other things I like to do with this cream cheese mixture, like say if you only wanted to make one roll up, um, it's nice smeared on toast or an English muffin or bagel. And if you have any, um, you could actually put some smoked salmon on top of that too, that would be nice. Um, I like it with a little, uh, this everything with the bagel seasoning from Trader Joe's. And I know there's a lot of different knockoff brands. It's um, it's like what, what's on an everything bagel, except it doesn't have caraway seeds and I don't really care for caraway seeds. So it's pretty nice. It's um, sesame seeds, sea salt flakes, dried minced garlic, dried minced onion, black sesame seeds and poppy seed. So it's a fun, it's a fun blend. And it works really well with those flavors. So that's another, another good way to use it. I haven't tried freezing it. I don't know if cream cheese, like flavored cream cheese freeze as well, but that might be worth experimenting with. Definitely I wouldn't freeze the roll-ups because I think they would get soggy. I think that is plenty. I've got world's largest green onions. And this was the smallest one from the bunch too, which was kind of funny. I'm gonna add that in there. Um, and then you can also, um, if you have capers, capers are really nice. I actually, I think I might add some of those in mine just because it's a good flavor. Um, speaking of whoever was mentioning the wholesale club before I buy capers from the wholesale club because I like them so much I buy like these huge jars um and I like the ones in brine so I'm gonna put maybe like a tablespoon or two um and I get these little non non per real I think that's how you say it so they're these like itty bitty ones I'm gonna cut some of those and the other thing you can do if you aren't sure you could divide this in half, put capers in half. Sun-dried tomatoes might be nice. Um, some really thinly sliced red onion if you wanna have it kind of be like a bagels and lox platter. Um, this one I don't put any salt in because the smoked salmon is usually pretty salty. Um, capers are salty. I think, did I put it on this recipe? Um, I didn't, but if you have uh, ground white pepper, versus black pepper. A little bit of that is nice in there. So I'm just giving it like a coarse, coarse chop. Put that in there. And then just smush it all together. Get this off. That's where the uh, softening of the cream cheese makes it easier to stir. I did a similar one with different veggies with uh, kids class recently and they were so cute. They were so excited to, to try to like come up with their own combinations to roll up in the uh, tortillas and they're more willing to try things when they got to make it themselves. So this is a, it's a fun one for kids to help with. Um, and if your kids or your adults don't like smoked salmon, um, it's good with any sort of like a deli meat, um, turkey or ham, salami, so like salty, meaty stuff. So um, I get these like burrito size tortillas 
Uh, you can use any size. The burrito size ones, I think they're like eight inches and it kind of, it, it makes a nice eight slices. So this is enough for four. So I'll just like kind of drag my knife through half and then through half again, just so I know approximately how much to use on here. And I'll scoop out one of those quarters and spread it around. The ends always, like you can trim off the very ends when you go to slice them. The ends are always like kind of rustic <laughs> because you're rolling everything. Um, they're not necessarily filled quite as well. So if you wanted to like present it on a platter, I would maybe after you roll it up, trim off the ends a little bit. Uh, and these, the, the cream cheese is kind of like glue. So it holds everything closed. I thought that they worked better after they sat at least an hour, but I found that it doesn't really matter. You can cut into them pretty much right away and they're good. The, the flavors might not have like melded fully by then, but I think it's okay. Um, and after you roll them, you can either wrap them in plastic wrap in a big log, or if you have a big uh, Tupperware container, you can put them in there just to kind of like keep them together while they chill in the fridge. Um, and then I have some smoked salmon. My stop and shop keeps moving <laughs> the smoked salmon and I thought I wasn't, thought I couldn't find any. It's in the seafood department now, um, which I guess makes sense, but it used to be by all the deli meat. But it's funny how like quickly you get accustomed to where things are in your normal store. I'm actually curious if any of you know, I don't know, I, for, I forgot to look it up, but why does smoked salmon usually come on these like gold, um, like cardboard that's coated in gold? Like, is there a reason? I'm so curious. These are the things that <laughs> Google is good for, but that out so for for um four of these i picked up eight ounces of salmon so you put about an ounce on each these packages are only four so i'm going to use about half and i just kind of tear it into pieces and leave a little bit of space so that the cream cheese has something to glue uh to glue it together oh, it smells really good <laughs> you don't even have to cook for things to smell good Um, and I think we have another, do we have another happy hour scheduled or we have just another class scheduled, like a holiday class, I'm trying to remember. We have, um, it's happy hour, it's make ahead um, appetizers. Oh, they yeah. sound amazing. Yes, that's in. That's in November, November, November. the first week in November. I think it's yes. the fourth um, and one of them is the gorgonzola tort with the fruit. That looked so good. Yeah, so that, um, sorry, I'm just, uh, I'm kind of pinching from the bottom and rolling and kind of compressing as I roll. So everything sticks in as tight. Um, that recipe, so I haven't made it in a long time. This is a good excuse for me to remake it and reshoot it. And um, it's cream cheese and gorgonzola and you blend them together and then you layer in dried fruit and nuts and herbs and it's this beautiful like you chill it and then you un unturn it and you put it on a cheese board or a serving platter and then you sprinkle toasted almonds on top and it's just such a pretty dish um one of my cousins actually told me she she lives in indiana i made it with her at a party once and she said ever since then like all her friends requested all the time <laughs> um, it's so good and there's something about like the dried cranberries and apricots and everything. It just is very summer, um, summer, wintry, wintry uh, to me. So, so that's, that's, yeah. That's one. And then you were doing an avocado, I think an avocado layer. Yeah. So it's like, um, that's what, that one I actually got from my cousin, Carrie, and that <laughs> she called it avocado dip, but I mean, it's kind of like one of those Mexican layer, you know, refried beans and, mm -hmm. like that. um, but those are both really great for like holiday entertaining, you make them ahead of time, leave them in the fridge, and then you don't have to like, yeah. I guess kind of like these actually, you don't really have to mess with them until people get there and you want to serve some food. Yeah. Husband's being loud. I'm going to mute here so you don't hear him. Um, so yeah, that's all, that's all there is to these 
roll ups. Um, the only thing I would say is when you're going to cut and I'll do, I'll put these in the fridge and then I'll demonstrate on one of them. Um, just use a serrated knife. So one that's got like the kind of sawtooth edge to it because um, just kind of like with bread, if you use a regular knife, you're gonna squish it down and then you'll lose that beautiful spiral center. Um, but it'll still taste good. So don't, don't fear, it'll still taste good. And I absolutely wouldn't judge you if you just took the whole thing and just like ate it as a like a burrito. <laughs> I would, I'm, I, there's no judgment here. So however, however you best like to do it. So get that on there. And I think actually just because it would be very pretty and I like the flavor of red onions and I have some that needs to be used up, I'm gonna thinly slice a little red onion just to show you a little alternative. Um, these kind of roll-ups with any type of cream cheese are a good way to clean out stuff in your fridge too. If you have a deli drawer and you've just got like some random like two slices of turkey and a couple slices of cheddar and whatever, it's a good way to just kind of use it up. Um, so yeah, just do a little, little red onion. My son, he's nine, he loves smoked salmon. And I'm like, so impressed because I, I grew up in the Midwest and I don't, we didn't eat seafood at all. We were landlocked and my mom doesn't like seafood. So I never ate it. And I now like the things my kid eats, just it blows my mind. He likes paella. <laughs> Um, things that I would never have ordered as a kid. So I'm trying to really let him go with that as much. So when he says he likes stuff like smoked salmon, I'm trying to find ways that he can enjoy it. Um, and I actually, if you have, if any of you have kids, I have this um, Adventurous Eaters Challenge that I've been doing. Um, and I have a, there's a page on my website, you go and you um, put in your email and you get this kit that's got like, some bingo cards. So it's to kind of encourage them to try new things. Um, that's a good tip, separating the salmon so that it sticks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The um, trial and error, this is how you learn. If you, if you did it without any of that space in there, it would be, you'd cut it and it would just kind of fall apart, but yeah. Um, so the Adventurous Eaters Challenge has been a lot of fun and I've got a lot of kids whose parents said that they, they're like excited to try these new things and there's certain things that are more adventurous maybe than others, but it's just to kind of encourage them that it's like always good to try new things. And, um, so there's a, and then that there's weekly emails that just give them like a, one more small challenge, like, you know, go uh, find a new piece of produce to try or um, think of a, a help make a meal for somebody in your family, just things to get, get them involved and not, I love screens, but to not always be on screens, which is kind of nice. Um, I'm gonna put these two in the fridge. I'm gonna prep the celery for our dip. So when, when you buy celery, don't shy away from buying the ones that have leaves on them because they're actually really delicious. Um, one of my very favorite recipes is a Persian meatloaf. And one of the ingredients in it is celery leaves. So you actually like chop them up and you mix them in with the meat. Um, I know celery hearts are more expensive and there's nothing wrong with getting celery hearts, but if you're getting them because you think that the, uh, there's no use for the leaves, there absolutely is. And they're nice in a Bloody Mary if you're, if you're into those. Um, so I'm just gonna separate these for now, but I'm going to just dice up a little bit of celery for the top of the dip and then cut a few stalks for serving with it. Uh, let's see. This cream cheese filling actually would be really good um, smushed into some celery too, but I think about it. So for the top, I'm just going to do like a, a really small dice just to sprinkle it. So people kind of know when they see the, um, the buffalo wing sauce and the celery and the blue cheese, they'll kind of 
guess what's going on in the dip if you don't have it labeled. Um, and then do a couple sticks for dipping. I find that like when, when you do a celery sticks like this, I think they're, it's like too much for some people. It's like a lot of celery at once. So I tend to split them either just down the middle like that, or even, oops, and then throw them on the floor or even one more time if they're real thick, just to give like not too much of that. I don't know. So I like celery, but it's not, you know, it's not the, my favorite um, veggie. So have some of those carrots would be really good here. Any type of like chips or you can even do crackers if you want Ritz crackers and spread, spread it on there. Um, and then I have some gorgonzola. I have already crumbles. You can get um, a block of gorgonzola or blue cheese and just like break little pieces off too. This is one that um, Wisconsin cheese sent me. So I haven't actually tried this particular one before. It's Kingston Creamery Heritage Gorgonzola Crumbles. And it says hand milking and renewable farming practices are the key to Kingston Creamery's award-winning heritage gorgonzola cheese. So blue cheese is a very polarizing ingredient that I find that people hate, love it or they hate it. So um, I enjoy it. I don't buy it too, too often. Ooh, it smells really nice. All right, so I'm gonna get our dip. Ooh, not let things fall out of my refrigerator. So I'm gonna put this here and then just drizzle some wing sauce on top. And then hit it with this chopped celery. And then some of this gorgonzola. This is a very creamy one. I haven't seen one that's like quite so wet looking before, but I'm gonna taste it because I'm curious. And two, if you have the pieces of blue cheese on top, people can avoid it if they don't like it. Ooh, that's really nice. It's not too, um, some blue cheeses are really, really funky. That one's nice, I like it. All right, so I got that stuff going on there. I'll just scoot it over and we can cut into one of these um, roll-ups. I won't make you watch me assemble two more, but I could if, if anybody wants, I can clean out my refrigerator and make roll-ups with other <laughs> deli meats that I have um, or ingredients, just random things. Oh, I did have some bell peppers that were already cut open. I have a lot of these like partial pieces of produce. Are gorgonzola and blue cheese the same? I think that gorgonzola, I feel like it might be only if it's from one specific area, but I'm not 100% sure and I should know this and I'm gonna make a note to find out because I should know this. Cause there's a lot of different, I know like Maytag is a type of blue cheese. Um, that's a really good question. I'm gonna do strips of this bell pepper. Oh, and you know, I'm just like remembering all the things that I have. I have some cauliflower that I had used in a sheet pan meal that I found on somebody else's website that was really nice. It was like a Greek, um, souvlaki, like a chicken souvlaki, and you could either do potatoes or cauliflower, depending if you um, are into those things. And I picked cauliflower because my son doesn't like potatoes and he didn't like the cauliflower. So uh -huh. <laughs> extras of it. Isn't that how it goes? But uh, so according yeah. to Google, yes. Uh, gorgonzola is a specific type of blue cheese produced in Northern Italy. Oh, okay. So there's our dip, which is that spilling. Really, really good one. And then 
these. Let me just dry my board a little so I don't get it too soggy. Uh, get my serrated knife. See if we got the nice brows. So I usually on these, I like to cut them in half first and then I cut each half in half. It kind of helps you get them a little bit even. And then each of those halves in half and that'll give you eight pretty nice sturdy slices. Do we got like the really nice little spiral and you have all the ingredients going throughout the whole thing, which is it's a nice it's a nice bite. Um, and my kid loves these in his lunches. I haven't tried, but I feel like it would be um, good doing like a desserty type of roll up with you could use cream cheese, you could use like Nutella or peanut butter and then like some real thin sliced fruit would probably be really good. But yeah, so these are just really good on a, an appetizer spread, better when they're chilled for a little bit. So um, yeah, and then the ends, like I said, sometimes the ends you get a little empty piece there. So that's just like the snacking ones. How long do you keep the roll-ups refrigerated? Um, I'm not the FDA, but I would say that they, um, they would last, I've had them for a good four or five days. Um, depending on how wet, whatever you put inside of it is, um, they might get like a little bit soggy, but I find that the smoked salmon and cream cheese hold up pretty well because the cream cheese is a pretty good moisture barrier. Um, it's when you're doing things like with different veggies, if you have uh, cucumbers or something that have a lot of moisture in them that they would get a little soggy, I think. You're welcome, Donna. Um, does anybody have any questions? I, this was like a pretty quick, quick one. Um, let's see, my other, I have on Thursday this week, I may have done this class with Rye before, but um, with the Somers Library, we're doing taco night, roasted sweet potato and black bean tacos. Um, and that's got like a cilantro chimichurri and pickled onions, really good and homemade guacamole. I know that we've made together. No, before. I don't think we, we haven't. Have. Well, we could totally do that class if, if sometime if you guys <laughs> are interested. It's, um, it, it's a really nice, um, meatless taco recipe and it came about because we were having steak with chimichurri and we had sweet potatoes and some of the chimichurri like leaked onto my sweet potato and I tasted it and I was like this is a really good combination so that like really punchy garlicky cilantro on the sweet potato is like really really nice um so yeah that's a good one. Oh, Jacqueline yeah it's um it's a good one and it's even like my family we eat meat and we eat plant-based also um we don't miss the meat um, for a meal like that. And the guacamole is, um, we figured out how to make like, you know, when you go to a restaurant and they bring out the person that's job is to like freshly make the uh, guacamole for you. We figured out how to do that at home. Um, if you have a mortar and pestle, it's best. Um, so like, can I easily reach mine? I can give you the, uh, the sneak peek of what it is, is the key is, you in, especially if you have a heavy mortar and pestle, you put garlic and some um, spices in here and you mix it around and make a paste with it first. Then you add your other stuff and it's like, it mellows out the garlic, it's so nice. Gorgonzola is a type of blue cheese, ages longer than blue cheese. Blue is made from cow, goat, and sheep milk. Gorgonzola is made from unskimmed cow and goat milk. Oh, very interesting. Yeah, I know there's some things like Parmesan to really technically be Parmigiano Reggiano has to be from that specific part in Italy. Um, and I recently learned Parmigiano is not vegetarian because they use animal rennet in it. So FYI, if many vegetarians still eat it because it's whatever, it's delicious. But um, mm -hmm. if, that's, if that is a concern for you, good to know. Um, How long would you say, Ashley, we should you know, if we were going to serve the roll-ups mm -hmm. as appetizers one evening, how long should they stay in the refrigerator before you cut them? To, to well, you could, them all? I would, if you can cut them right before you serve them, cool. If you can't, like I'm, we'll probably eat some of these tonight and I'm going to put the rest of them in this container just like this. And as long as it's airtight, it's fine. Um, it might get not quite, like it might, I don't know. It only takes a moment to 
to slice them. But if that if that time crunch is really important, um, maybe like an hour before, half hour before, slice them, put them back in your container, leave them in the fridge, and wait to serve them until uh, until you're ready to actually like eat them. I wouldn't let them sit out for too too long, mm -hmm. um, just because it's fish. Although it is, you know, cured like salt cured fish. I guess technically it's okay to be out a little, but. And should they be in the refrigerator for any length of time before you cut them? Like, should they be in for like an hour? I prefer it, them to be in for an hour or more just so that, like, you know, it's kind of, it's like nice and cold and the flavor is kind of, um, like the cream cheese really tastes like all the ingredients. Mm -hmm. But um, normally if I was making this for a party, I would make, like if I was having people over Saturday, mm -hmm. I would make it Friday, put it in the fridge, and then like a half hour or so before people came over, I would like cut the things. You could even like cut them, put them on whatever serving tray and put the serving tray in the fridge. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Remember having parties and having people over? Yeah. <laughs> it's been a bit for us, but yeah. 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 Does anybody else have any questions or requests for future appetizers? I don't know if this is one we're going to um keep doing there are so many appetizers lots of possibilities um i try to do a mix of like plant-based and not just to not you know completely exclude anybody because there's plenty of things that are delicious for our omnivores i'm wondering how many people here might want to do another cheese board mm -hmm. that was uh, a really cool program that ashley ashley makes these out of the box cheese boards yeah. they're really awesome <laughs> yeah i am um, it's those are fun and I actually I posted on Instagram today because I had had some interest in another in people and doing another cheese board program so I want to think of another appetizer to make with it because last time and I think with your group also we did the garlicky goat cheese and herb stuffed pepidus which are great and they're beautiful on a board but I figured like we'll mix it up a little bit yeah. um because cheese boards are like I, I have like a vague idea of what I want to do, but you just kind of like see where the ingredients take you. And you're like an okay. artist of the cheese board. Thank you. I mean, I, I went to art school, so I feel like if that's where <laughs> that took me, I'm totally good with that. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. But yeah, I'm always, always happy to work requests in if it's something that I know how to make or a good excuse to learn how to make something. So. Ashley, my kids love pasta, um, like regular pasta, not the sophisticated one, like, you yep. know, salmon and just regular pasta with, you know, like nice cheese sauce, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So if you have time, you can teach us, you know, in the next topic, you know, like regular pasta, like fettuccine, linguine, uh, you know, with simple, you know, broccoli and things like that. Just for kids, you know, they don't need sophisticated, like with salmon or things like that. So if yeah. you have any of those dishes. Like something, something kid friendly. I do, um, I do kids classes also. Um, I know one of the things that's been a big hit with kids um, and some of my other classes is uh, pasta salad skewers. And they're a great appetizer. Also, did we do those before, Catherine? I don't think yeah. so. Okay, I can't, I can't keep them. I have a list, so I know <laughs> all the ones we've done. But um, that's fun because it encourages them to try some different like veggies and stuff added on. So you make like tortellini or whatever. And then you skewer them with like bell peppers or olives, or, you know, you can try to, it's a, it's a good way to encourage them to like, Hey, you see this artichoke? Like, just try it. Just try one, just put it on the stick and then see if you like it. <laughs> um, tomatoes and stuff. And for that, we make, I make a, a creamy balsamic vinaigrette. That's actually based on the one, the restaurant that's over near my house that we ordered from tonight. <laughs> they make this creamy balsamic. That's so good. You can like you can, so you can dip the skewers into it or if they're like feeling very shy about that you could just have like a cup of marinara um but yeah kind of like doing like doing it a little in a different format sometimes is a good way to encourage them to try new things um especially food on a stick and food on a stick is always fun <laughs> um yeah um but pasta pasta is always a good one I missed anything. Hmm. All right. Um, thank you guys so much for coming and joining. If you did make this or you plan to make it and you want to share a photo um, on social media, you can tag me at Big Flavors um, and have a hashtag cook Big Flavors if you want. Or you can just email it back to Catherine um, 
the recipe with the gorgonzola and dried fruit. Yeah, we're making that in, um, she said the date in November. I think it's November 4th. I'm pretty sure. Give me yeah. a minute. Because I only listed the, my next three classes on my list of next ones coming up. Uh, but yeah, that one's really good. Oh, actually, yeah. you mentioned the Somers Library. You say this Thursday for taco because my mm -hmm. son loves taco. Yeah. Is it Somers Library? Yeah, um, I'll send you, this is, um, I put all of the programs, because I do things with a bunch of different libraries, but then also on my own. Um, so this page is my events page. So like I have, I had a link to tonight's program that would just take you to the Rye Library's website to sign up. Um, the taco night that's this Thursday, here's that. Where can I find information about the challenge? Oh, that is... This is the Adventurous Eaters Challenge. And my son, so my son has been helping me with this. This has been a really good way to get him like even more excited about food. So every, a couple of the, um, the challenges that go out are like videos of him saying like, this week's challenge, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's really cute. <laughs> he's really um, cute, guys. And he's, he's awesome. editing, he's editing videos. He's so, he's having a lot of fun with it. Um, and I'm working on a Hall of Fame page for my website. So kids who complete their bingo card or if they do certain challenges and they wanna be included, I'm gonna have like a page so they can have like internet fame and <laughs> anything, that, anything that'll like help encourage them to be adventurous. I'm, I'm all on board with it, so. So the next happy hour, the one with the, um, tar the gorgonzola fruit tart, tort, 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 right? Torta. Yeah. Torta. Um, is is uh, Thursday, November 4th. So the first Thursday. And Ashley, I have it at 6.30. I really hope that's what we, we yeah, you, meant to have it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if I have it also as at 6.30. Yes. Yeah. But I mean. That's fine with us. I just yeah. didn't want to do a time you didn't want. <laughs> Actually, no, I'm, I'm done doing programs. <laughs> <laughs> no 6.30s for me. <laughs> I'm just going to be eating the Gorgonzola in the corner yeah. bobbing. Because if you if you have a chance to look at the picture on the library website it looks so good <laughs> yeah it's it's really good and it's got that like sweet and salty thing going on because you have mm -hmm. like the gorgonzola and the gorgonzola is cut with cream cheese so it's not just like pure tangy blue cheese but then you've got like all the sweet bits of fruit and stuff it's it's a really fun one and i'm gonna test making i think that um you can make smaller ones like in cupcake molds instead of like i do it in a loaf pan yeah. um and I've heard it freezes well. I haven't personally tried it. So th these are the experiments <laughs> that I do when I'm not actually teaching. I like, I have cookie dough in the freezer that I made last night. I saved two pieces so that I can see if it freezes well. <laughs> <laughs> like my kind of science. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yeah. Awesome. Um, cool. Anybody else has any questions or you can always feel free to reach out to me um yeah well thank you so much thank you very much and i hope um whoever was cooking italian food at home i hope dinner is delicious <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. enjoy thank you so much yeah, Ashley. Thank you. Love having you you're such a great presenter thank, thank you, you. Oh, hello. Yes, it, it's recorded and oh okay um, thank you thank it, you it will be if you go to the home page of the library website uh, click on the little icon that links to our in, um, our YouTube, and it'll be right there. It won't be there until like the end of the day tomorrow. Okay, and what, just tell me again, please, what's the name of your library? Because I do all different libraries. Oh, Rye Free Reading Room. Thank you. So tomorrow evening, you would say it will yeah, be Yeah, I'll there. put it up like probably around midday. And I click on the icon on the top right corner? On yeah, the that hit the YouTube icon oh and look up this particular uh lesson it'll, it'll bring you to our our video page and it'll probably be the first video because it's the most recent video added okay great i i was so distracted i couldn't pay close attention i'm very happy thank Aww. you well, and Kath catherine how long the video will be on like is it always oh it'll there? be on like forever it just stays on our youtube channel mm-hmm it's always there, right? Because yeah. I know that Ashley, how a couple, you know, how a couple, like a couple months ago, they, or or her stuff is there, right? You All of her stuff any. is there. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you go and look, it should be there. Okay, good. Thank awesome. you. Mm -hmm.
I guess I should stop recording. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, thanks again, Ashley. Thank you, everyone.